Um, my name's Jess Clark, and I'm one of the founders of the Business Group, and welcome to Lounge One, the Data London, uh, during the conference so far. Um, today I'm going to speak uh, a little bit about how we help you uh, as an intern student uh, get prepared for the market, and to build a CV and your LinkedIn profile and get prepared uh, for the workplace and how best to go about finding new opportunities. Um, so I'll take you through some, some slides now and hopefully you'll find it very useful. Uh, thanks for joining me and um, hope you enjoy the presentation. Supporting yourselves as interns and also there'll be a section uh, by Lucy Lynch who is our Head of Graduate Partnerships regarding how uh, businesses can benefit from a data science internship. So let's look at uh, how best to build a CV that sets you apart from the crowd. Um, firstly, you know, what we need to think about is how to make the CV look attractive. So if you are a creative individual, then it's a good idea to perhaps make the CV look slightly different to the standard format. So if you want to include some colours or use the CV in a different format, build the CV in a different format, then, then go ahead and do so. Customers actually really like to look at an attractive, well laid out, uh, clear CV. And we're always happy to provide some examples of what they might look like. Um, but typically, if you're looking to, to make sure that you, uh, the customer, um, actually sees what's going on very, very clearly, then it should start with a personal profile. And the personal profile should be about you. So it might talk about um, the type of individual that you are, uh, whether you're a creative person with clear communication skills, um, and talk about things that you might have done in the past, but where you believe that you can add some value. Should be a paragraph, no longer than about five or six lines, um, but it clearly states, you know, that you that talk about yourself as if you are a professional person, or you're a creative thinker, or you're a friendly, lovely type of individual but make that personal profile attractive. So if someone asks you about yourself, how would you talk about your own personal abilities and skills in that section? So keep that at the top of the CV. Very important, the personal profile. If you've been um, studying certain technologies or you're used to using technology, either in a business, if you have had some work experience or not, but underneath the personal profile should come some soft and technical skills. So like a summary, it could be in a table format or it could be um, just again another paragraph, but typically a very, very clear snapshot of what your soft and technical skills are that you can offer to a potential client, where your strongest skills are and those that maybe that you've touched upon uh, and are not so strong in development. So it does give a client or a business owner uh, an idea of where they might be able to help you develop in your, in your career. Um, if you don't have work experience, then it's a it's a very, very good uh, idea to actually include some most recent achievements. And these could be things that you did uh, as part of your university degree, um, or there might be there might be some um, details of where you have had some work experience and you'd like to talk about that because there may have been some achievements um, and successes uh, that you'd like to make a potential employer know about. So, a nice clear format CV, personal profile, followed by a soft, soft and technical skills summary, um, and the most recent achievements which you had uh, to date. Um, if there's been a significant amount of experience, you might be someone that's got work experience in the past and then you've decided to uh, undertake a degree, then you might have more to say. So if that's the case, then we move straight into after most recent achievements, your employment summary. So if, there has, uh, if you do have some career history, then make sure that comes next. A um, maximum of two pages, I would suggest. For more experienced people, sometimes they might move into three, but you know, really what we need to think about when um, potentially employers are looking at CVs is they might receive lots of them, um, and therefore you know, they'll only have a certain amount of time. And the first half of the page of page one will be where they would typically make the decision as to whether or not they'd like to bring you in for an interview. Um, so try to keep it uh, nice, clear, concise, and not too much 
waffle, so not too much detail, but making it very, very clear the point you're trying to make for your CV. And then I have spoken to many customers who do like to uh, look at what the interests are. So interests and hobbies at the bottom of the CV can be quite attractive for some customers. They might like to know a little bit more about you. So what are your hobbies? You know, do you do you, do you have hobbies or specific interests in sports or whatever that might be? But it does give a customer a little bit of an idea about what you're all about. So that's the real, real sort of standard format, uh, which makes a good profile. And um, and then we can move on to once we've built the profile and the CV, have it reviewed by someone, uh, members of your family, see what they think. Also, if you know anybody in your network that's a potential business owner or anybody who's in a position where they might recruit people, ask them to review the CV. And if you do have any references, I would include those as well. Um, even if it's just the names of the people or to say that they're available on request, at least the potential employer would know that you have them. The next thing we look at is LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is one of the biggest tools in the world, uh, which not only do recruiters go to to um, advertise their roles and to look for people on the network for on behalf of their customers when they're performing searches, but also for you. It's the way that you can actually uh, engage with the market directly. Now, building the profile might be something that you haven't done in the past, but it's not too hard to do, and there's lots of uh, help, uh, YouTube videos, LinkedIn has its own uh, repository of videos as well about how you can best build your profile. But what we would say is the picture uh, is important. So a very professional and personable picture. So, you know, try and get some personality in there. I think it's really important to smile. Um, make sure it's nice and clear and of decent quality if you can. So most camera phones these days will be able to take a decent picture and upload that into your profile. Then like the CV, the personal profile will be the first um, thing that most people will read. So uh, the personal profile is much better if it actually does reflect what's already on the CV as well. So some customers will look at a CV and then they'll go onto LinkedIn to see if you're present on LinkedIn. And they typically should be the same. You don't want any differentiators between the CV that you've built and the LinkedIn profile that you've built. It's good if they're consistent. There's an opportunity on LinkedIn to add in keywords. And keywords will typically help recruiters search through LinkedIn and also companies, if they're recruiting directly, they might run keyword searches to see if they can pull up uh, a list of potential candidates um, with certain skills. So make sure you include the top five skills that you have, but try not to list too many, because if you list too many and ones that aren't really, really relevant, then you might be coming up uh, in searches for, for those looking. Um, and not be completely suitable for the job. So pick the ones that you know, and in our space, in the data space, you know, depending if you're a data scientist and you want to put in your, your strongest coding languages like R and Python and SQL, etc., then make sure that they're there. But also the softer skills as well, so communication skills, if there's been any stakeholder management or anything like that, then make sure that they're included. You do get an opportunity to add up to at least 10 keywords onto your profile. And also within LinkedIn, there are groups. There are lots, thousands of groups that have been created for sets of individuals that have a common interest in certain things. Um, and again, in our data space, there are groups for chief data officers, for architects, for engineers, for data scientists, for business intelligence experts and analysts. So try and join a number of groups um, and that you can then, you can basically then interact with the other individuals in those groups and they will equally look at your profile. And if you're job seeking, then it's, it's a great way of actually interacting with the community that's available on LinkedIn. So join some groups on there that are very, very relevant to your skill set and your interests, what you're looking to do and what sort of opportunity you're looking to find. Um, there is a ton of relevant content uh, within our market available at the fingertips on Google. You can share a lot of white papers, um, a lot of information, a lot of uh, event information, conference information, and you can share that content on LinkedIn. So try to think of LinkedIn as a massive community of people that you want to share your thoughts and ideas with, and therefore you can actually look for relevant content, share the content, and make comment on the content. Um, the algorithms in LinkedIn, they do make um, posts and shares um, much more available and visible um, to people where comments have been made and discussion has been built. 
Um, so, so trying to do that, trying to share, share content fairly consistently, once or twice a week, um, comment on this, your thoughts about certain subjects and topics and things of uh, interest to you, which are relevant to your skill set and the market that you're looking to, to hire into. Um, post your successes. If you're doing really well at something or you've just achieved something, then post those and be proud of them. Um, often better to post with a picture. And certainly there's much more engagement when you post pictures um, where there are, where there's a human element. So there's people involved or it could be animals or it could be anything, but something very, very relevant to whatever the post is about. But definitely share your successes because people do like to read good news and often you'll get a lot of well dones and likes on things like that, which draws attention to your LinkedIn profile too. And then those that, again, are job seeking will look at that and it's, I think it's a very, very good reflection of uh, someone's personality to, to post their successes on LinkedIn. And again, share your thoughts and discussion around certain content that you see and other posts, lots of other people within the network will post very similar uh, topics, conversation, and their successes, and again, try and interact with those and share your thoughts. And that's a good, good starting point for someone um, who perhaps doesn't have much career experience but wants to get visible on what is the biggest business network in the world. So once you've done that, you've got your LinkedIn profile set up and a good CV ready to send, how's the best way to look for a new role? And also ultimately manage your own expectations because um, Looking for employment isn't easy and it does take a lot of effort from your side if you are job seeking. Um, the jobs won't just fall in your lap, so you've got to be prepared to put in some hard work and that will be that, that will become apparent as you go through your job search. So do your research. If there are certain companies that you'd like to work for that uh, have specific objectives uh, in certain locations of a certain size organisation or they're just very relevant topics which strike your interest, um, it's better to do your research. So maybe you can come up with a list of 20, 50 or 100 companies that you could potentially like to work for and actually uh, build that list. So take the time to do some research because, you know, like I say, it doesn't just come to you. And a lot of companies will advertise directly. And you'll see this on certain job boards, you'll see this on LinkedIn, and you will see this on their websites as well. So the more time you take to actually research um, through the internet and through your own referral network, the more opportunities you will learn uh, to hear about and therefore you can apply to. Of course, there are specialist agencies like us. Uh, we're a data staffing business. So that's the only real world that we operate in. So uh, again, look for those agencies, make contact with those agencies and send your new CV and perhaps your LinkedIn profile uh, hyperlink to the agencies, make contacts and let them know that you are available and looking for a job opportunity. There are lots of job boards, um, places like JobServe and JobSite and um, Indeed and, and lots of them, but there are many job boards that are advertising lots of different roles, but make sure, try to make sure that they are relevant to you. Um, other companies might specialise in uh, administration or sales or finance or marketing. If you're a data person, if you're a data scientist, then try to seek out those data agencies who understand what it is that you're looking for, but also have a very, very good network of contacts and clients and they might be able to introduce you to. Of course, try to attend lots of things like uh, university roadshows, um, there are lots of recruitment fairs that go on through the year and lots of webinars, etc., which you might get involved with. Um, so try to do that as well, but try to keep it specialist. LinkedIn does hold a lot of jobs, uh, lots of jobs are advertised on that platform and also there are lots of roles that are advertised through groups and also through, through posts. So there are lots of agencies, um, specialist data agencies and other agencies that will post their jobs onto LinkedIn. So this is why it's very, very important to be quite active on the platform and be checking it two or three times a day if you can, if you're job seeking and making sure that um, you are applying and making yourself known and visible to those that are looking. Um, manage your own expectations. I mentioned this at the beginning. It really won't be that easy straight away. And obviously you're in a highly competitive world. Um, certainly through post lockdown, you know, the job market has taken a hit. So there won't be as many requirements available at the moment. Although 
they are still there and the market is picking up now, thankfully. So manage your own expectations, try and put a timeline in there as to how long you think it will take you to get a role, but please do expect it to be hard work. It won't be easy. And I honestly believe that those that really, really do make an effort to do the research, look on lots of different platforms and means where you can find work, um, interacting with the market lots is really, really important. Um, and therefore you should, and I would imagine you will get more opportunities coming your way uh, that you can apply to or be relevant. Once you have, hopefully, um, spoken to a potential customer or agency or seen an opportunity um, and you apply for it, you've been invited for an interview, then you've really got to think about how you're going to make the most of that potential opportunity that sits in front of you. So preparing for interview success, you may only get the one opportunity to actually uh, do very well at that meeting or interview or video call. So preparation is everything. In this particular instance of post-COVID, there's lots more video interviewing going on. So it's a really, really good idea to make sure you've got the right technology at home, you're in the right room, uh, where you've got a, a sensible background behind you, and you've got a strong internet connection to be able to undertake video interviews. So get yourself set up. When I say preparation is everything, you know, think about what's going to happen in the interview. The potential employer might ask you questions about the business. So we search the business. Tabs on company websites like investor relations and press releases are a great place to find information where um, you can understand what's going on with the organisation, what their vision is, what their drive is, what their recent successes are. And that could be great for conversation and certainly is a good conversation starter. Um, when you first have um, your first meeting with a potential new employer. Um, use your personality in the interview. You know, make sure that they get to see the real you. So whether that's about your initial engagement, what you want to talk about, how you conduct yourself on the video call, where you have a smile on your face is very important. Anything that you can do to make that actual meeting more welcome is really, really important. So do use your personality. Talk about things that you like. Do and really try and give the potential employer a little bit of information about you. Um, if you're asked to, uh, to do, deliver a presentation as part of the interview, then make sure you research it. So many times people will build a PowerPoint deck or they'll you know, actually prepare some content for a presentation, but don't actually rehearse it. Um, I'm sure with most people, there are plenty of people that you could run through that presentation with, Run through it and run through it until it becomes a habit. So you understand uh, exactly what's coming next. And you understand what the message that you're trying to deliver and you know your presentation inside and out. It's really, really key. and It doesn't take too long to prepare. Most presentations are between five and 15, 15 minutes long with the interviews. Um, and therefore, if you just rehearse them five or six times until you feel really comfortable with that, then uh, you'll stand you in good stead when the interview happens. Plan for competency-based questioning. Um, most people don't expect this or actually plan for it before an interview. But if you are finding out what's going on with the interview process, an agent or a company direct will let you know that there will be some competency-based questions. So they'll be asking you about certain instances, what would you do in certain circumstances, and you need to be prepared for that kind of questioning. Um, so it's, it's, good to, it's good to prepare for that before it actually happens. If you're able to, and you've had references maybe from part-time work or full-time work in the people that you value in your network, it's great to ask them first, prior to the interview, if they're happy for you to utilise them as a reference, because it's very, very powerful in an interview to be able to say near the end, I have got references, they are on my CV, um, and I'm happy to pass on their contact details to you so that you can actually reference me as an individual and also the work that I've undertaken in the past, um, rather than a customer or a potential employer coming to you and asking you for references if you have any, and at the time, perhaps those people that you would like to reference for you aren't available or on holiday, and therefore a potential new employer might have to wait. We don't want that. It's better to get that straight up if you can. So that's one thing you can do to prepare the interview. Ultimately, as in the past slides I've said about you know, managing your own expectations, thinking that it will be hard work, 
really, really go to make the effort. Um, it's so important uh, for you to make a real effort on all of those points that I've just mentioned at interview stage. Um, this will certainly give you a much higher chance of securing a new opportunity. That's all I'm going to say today for this particular part. And if you do have any questions, you can book meetings uh, with us um, at Eden Smith directly. Uh, they'll be in the lounges. You'll be able to click a button and uh, either chat to us directly. Um, but uh, thank you for listening and um, enjoy the rest of the conference. And I hope to hear from you soon. Hi, my name is Lucy Lynch and I'm Head of Graduate Partnerships at Eden Smith. I've been working with the company for about three years now and I've built a developmental programme Nurture. Uh, very uh, recently we've been uh, nominated to be on the shortlist for the Data IQ Award as Best Developmental Programme, which is really, really, truly exciting and we're very, very proud of this. Um, and we find out at the end of the month whether we might have won and so please do keep your fingers and toes crossed for us. So what is Nurture? Um, what what it is is basically it's a it's a graduate program where we're where we're helping students to um, get access to the best talent and to be able to do something quite incredible in three months. So the Nurture programme runs with about 16 universities. We have 40 clients at the moment and we usually year on year help about 100 students. So the benefits for the students are they get access to uh, working with a real live data set, a real life company, real life people. Very, very exciting and very different to working in an academic setting. First, first sort of hand knowledge of what it's like to work in an environment where it's fast paced, where there are deadlines, um, where, you know, they have to do lots of different things to to get the end result. Um, and the benefit for the client is that they get access to these bright minds, you know, very, very, sort of, it's very accessible uh, program. And we're trying to make it as inclusive as possible and so that everyone can participate. And when we think about participating companies over the last few years, with uh, SMEs, we've worked with large corporations, we have worked with uh, local councils and within the startup community as well. It's been a great success. And I think what's really important to, to recognise is that the Nurture programme is a brilliant way to um, introduce an internship programme, graduate programme into your business. Um, because there are no uh, big upfront financial fees, um, you know, no heavy kind of costs and outlay. Um, it's a very um, streamlined and reducer, reduced service because what we want to do is we want to make sure that, you know, many people can take part in this and that what they can do is kind of get a taste for it for three months and then if it works and it works with a student and they want to onboard the student, you know, on a permanent basis, then it's quite a quite an easy route into doing this. And obviously we're looking at the best sort of talent pools through universities across the country and we're giving you access to this emerging. Extreme talent um, and, and I think it's a great way to um, you know, help fulfil your diversity and inclusion um, rates and to really kind of like ensure that you are truly uh, building a team that is is looking across all all kind of like ratios. And what we want to do is to is to help you build this team. So we're taking the headache out of this and one of the best sort of feedback. Um, from this with a client and they said you know it's really great because it's like a three-month interview we get to work with the student we get to see how they respond we get to see how they react to tricky stakeholders and whether they're going to be able to work in this sort of fast-paced environment and you know that's great because often when you're going down the recruitment path you maybe are doing a one or two stage interview uh, process and you don't really get to know the person. You don't get to really understand the, the nitty gritty, you know, of how they're going to operate. 
under pressure or you know different variables so i think that's highly important and very very beneficial to a company because a lot of money you know is is wasted you know by staff retention so i feel the successes of the nurture program are that the students that we've placed within companies are are actually most of them are still there um, you know a couple of years later so definitely the value of um, hiring the right candidate in at the right is is highly indicative of a successful strategic plan so i really um, implore you to you know get on board the nurture program if you haven't already got a graduate or internship program please do feel free to talk to us because um, we really want to help and we really want to help you make sense of your data. Thank you.